to talk about the agenda for January so we can get that out of the way. Um, for the month of January 14th, we have at 5.10 p.m. Tori Eklin, who's Chair of Committee on Disabilities, and she will speak and give an update on the large print menus and also the Braille. At 525, we have Lola Keslow, Executive Assistant to the Northampton VID. She's going to give us an update about the Braille and the large print menus and the direction of it that the VID is going in. And she's been working really hard, and I think we have like five or six restaurants already who've cleared. So that's it for the month of January. And I also, um, Councilor Tacy, on a reminder, we had to move it up because City Hall is closed on the 21st of January, so yep. it's <coughs> on January 14th. Okay. Okay. Yep. And I agree with you, Councilor Tacy. I'm going to take um, Anita Garcia out of order and bring her up. So you can come forward. Yeah. 
uh, because Hampshire Heights and Corn Heights don't have tenants association right now. We have a group of uh, residents that come to Casa Latina uh, and have complaints about different situations that they have yeah. uh, in the projects. They have, we, you know, we, we in collaboration with Women's uh, Haymarket and Community Foundation, we are developing uh, the tenants association in both uh, projects. And the association is for all uh, residents, not yeah. just Latino and those. Yeah. Well, the reason I asked, I, I was under the impression that Foreign Sites and the Hampton, they, they had a tenants association. They had it a long time ago. Okay, they so it no longer it. exists. No, no. Okay. I would say that probably for the last 10 years, they haven't had any, any association. How do you know why? It's very difficult uh, to organize the community. Uh, there are people that really want to see a tenants association. There are uh, another group of people that they don't, don't want to see that association for so many different reasons. Uh, right now, it has been a challenge for us to work with the community, to organize the community. Uh, we are working in collaboration with uh, Northampton Housing Authority mm -hmm. uh, to do it. But, uh, and we, we are not going to stop. We think that probably at, we, at the end, we are gonna have a group of probably eight people, around eight to 10 people in each one. But at least we are going to have a representation of each one. So. There's 48 units at Lawrence Heights? Yes. And how many in Hampshire Heights? Do you know? No, I really don't have it in my mind. I, I don't remember right now. I'm it's more. It, it's, it's more, more in Hampshire Heights than Lawrence Heights. Okay. Lawrence Heights is much smaller. Mm -hmm. and Lawrence Heights has what? 12? Four, 12 buildings, 40 units apiece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, between the two, you know, um, the amount of support that we're getting it still is only, I think, amounts to maybe four to six thousand dollars to do those that huge undertaking. And so we are looking for additional funding to support that the development of this tenant association because we just have limited resources too right now. And just in a nutshell, the difficulty that you have doing this. Can you explain some of the difficulty? I don't want to really go in detail. Okay. Not a okay. easy topic. That's fine. So, That's yeah. Perfect. And then that gives me a sense. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was something that we might be able to do something about, but it mm -hmm. seems like it's not at this mm, point. No, no, okay. I don't think so. Okay. Um, I, you know, I, what I want to say, and, and then Heather is going to go with a lot of more information. Uh, what I want to say about Casa Latina is that. The reason I really believe in the work that Casa Latina does with the Latino community in Hampshire County is because my own experience through Casa, with Casa Latina. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can be, you know, I am, I, I feel that uh, every time someone comes to Casa Latina to, be, you know, to uh, request for services, uh, I project myself, I think, in some way. Because I, I, I was at home when someone from Casa Latina 14 years ago knocked the door, 13 years ago, knocked the door and invited me to come to one of the groups to, to participate and develop a relationship with other people in the community. And I, I have to say very clear, I was depressed, very depressed because the situation that I had at home, I had three kids, one with disabilities, a newborn, and I just was a single mother. And I finished a, a, an associate degree in Holy, in Holy Community College, uh, and I planned to go to Smith College in September, that was in, in June when I finished there, uh, and I couldn't continue my studies in Smith College. Someone knocked the door in September. My newborn was just four months when they knocked the door, and they invited me to come to one of the groups, and I said, are you kidding me? September, it's cold can't go outside, you know, with my kids at six o'clock, six to eight, yeah, impossible. Yeah. Impossible for me. And two weeks after that, they knocked the door again. And she said, you know, I'm, I came back because I think that you are gonna, you know, if you go, you are gonna see that you can take advantage of the services that we offer. You are gonna develop relationships with other women in the community. And I think that you are gonna enjoy to be, you know, those meetings. And, and she was so nice. And the way that she explained to me that I could, you know, uh, be um, less isolated because I was, I felt in a, at the time that I was completely isolated in the community. I didn't know many people in this community. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went to the meeting, they provided 
transportation. They provided uh, snacks and child care. Wow. And I went to the meeting, and since that time, I have never been, you know, I have been participating in every single acti uh, group, educational group that they have developed. And it was because the change that that uh, made on me. You know, I changed my everything. Everything changed uh, with me. And, and I have seen that through all of these years, I have seen that in many people in our community. And we continue doing exactly the same thing that that lady that came to my house did at that time. We go door to door, we invite people to come. When we had that uh, interview, uh, we talk about so many different things and then they, they know, you know, at the time probably they don't call Casa Latina uh, to ask for services, but when we knock the door and we have the conversations about our services, they just come to, you know, to us and say, now that you are here, you know, I can talk to you about this and all that, you know, and they have a list of needs that we can work together and resolve. And then they come to Casa Latina because we invite them to participate in these programs. And every time we develop a group, we see that people in our community develop relationships between them. I can tell you about so many people in the community that I know that they have met in Casa Latina during these groups and they have a very strong relationship and they support each other everywhere after that meeting. So that is what makes a difference. You know, how many would you say that you work with on a weekly basis? Well, on weekly, I, I don't have, but today is Monday. <laughs> sure, but <laughs> anyway. I would say with it today. I, took ha I had two people in the office today uh, to complete forms for few assistants. Uh, and then I received uh, three calls for, for uh, co to coordinate appointments. I received one call of someone that is, is going to provide some, uh, she's collecting calls and she wants to know who in the community can meet that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I, I had another call for someone that needs a, to complete some documentation and she got an appointment. Uh, so two, three, Seven, eight, yeah, around eight people today. And then I got a call from Valley Medical Group that is coordinate uh, some services for someone in the community. That was just for today, and I was not in the office the whole day today. Now, in your office, it's just the two of you? Um, no, I'm just on the board of directors, so I'm not employed there. Okay. Um, so who works with you? Lydia Torres. And then there's also. Um, Do you need the spelling on it? Oh, yeah. L I L L I A N T O R R E S. Okay. Um, Casa has also been working with um, Holyoke Community College to um, get work study students. So then the college pays for them, but we they work, you know, and, there, and also there's several volunteers and people who are doing. I'm not sure I'm saying this quickly correctly, but like the welfare to work um, transition. Community hours. Community. Yeah. And where did they go? The Hoyle community or did they go here? No, they they, they were studies they, they were to, they work uh, uh, they are students in Holy Community College and they come to work in Casa Latina. I got gotcha. Holy mm -hmm. Community College College space for them. Yeah. And then the people who come through from the transitional assistant they do their work in Casa Latina. So, so that, that is a lot of support. Mm -hmm. And how many are on the board of directors? Um, currently, it's growing. We're getting some new members, and we, we're open to having some more members. But there's, I think, currently we have um, eight members on our board. Four. Oh, so we have, um, well, myself, um, Rose Cabrera is um, uh, works at Northampton Montessori. Um, I that name sounds familiar. Yeah, she's delightful. Sure. Yeah, and um, Marie Aguilar Gual, she works at Smith College. Um, Lou Franco. Um, oh, we know Lou. Okay, yeah, he's on our board. Um, Emma Fabo, um, Elizabeth Jimenez, Maria Plazas, and Sherry Hall Smith, who's um, so a mixture of um, a diversity. Yeah, and community members. And we have a couple of presidents. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. Yeah, and we're really actively, actively looking for some new board members. How long have you been in collaboration with HCC? Is that a long time? Three years ago. Three years. Mm -hmm. 
This is something new. Yeah. They, they, they used to have the students in college. Mm -hmm. Now they have them in yeah, the field. Yeah, we're yeah. working in the field. Yeah. Yeah. And we're looking to collaborate with other colleges and universities and a lot, on a lot of levels. Um, yep. Yeah, that but it takes a certain amount of coordination too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask you, anything with UMass at all? We have worked with them. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, easy. We have had students that you were going to say that's not easy to work with you, Pat. I love no, anything. No. It hasn't been easy to have the students because what happened is that when we uh, need the support, uh, when they can do volunteer work, uh, is to work uh, directly with Latinos. And, and if they don't speak Spanish, it's a challenge for them. Mm -hmm. They want to provide, a, you know, they, they want to work in the office to do some hours. They can't do that because when they answer the phone, they can't communicate in Spanish. And, and you know, st some of them have come with a little bit of Spanish, and then they feel frustrated and, and they leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have had uh, students to do like childcare. They have done that for a while. It's easier with the kids because the majority of them speak speak English. Mm -hmm. Parents, they don't, and that is the, the situation. Yeah. When they depend the, the work that they can do. We have had in the past uh, the longer we, the, the longer that we have uh, someone else for for six months student here uh, from Smith College, and she uh, collaborated with us for four hours a week uh, for six months, and she did a lot of work uh, in the schools. Yeah. And she, she, of course, mm -hmm. she spoke very well Spanish, and, and that was the mm -hmm. reason she could stay with us for a long period. So then it's just you and another person in the office, that's right. it. Right, right now okay, it's yeah. just two employees. Yeah. How mm -hmm. is your finances to run your program? Mm -hmm. Uh, we have exactly to cover the needs. Uh, next as year, as when? Uh, well, so our operating budget is um, under two hundred thousand, um, and on this shoestring really budget, it, I mean it's really quite impressive. You know the amount of services Casa Latina gives. You know, like I think Anita was describing, even just helping one person with fuel assistance, or you know where Northampton Area Pediatrics calls us to arrange for uh, transportation interpretation and to make sure that someone follows up on their follow-up visit or that kind of service um, takes multiple phone calls, you know, okay. and Can so, I, yeah. I just wanted to ask you, you mentioned about fuel assistance. Are you working with community action on the fuel assistance? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's, we, there's actually, I mean, I was looking at this because Anita just gave it to me, this list of collaborators. Mm -hmm. And the thing that impressed me most, you know, like a lot of people say, oh, we collaborate with these, you know, 70 people. When I looked at this list, I'm like, yeah, it's actually, that is a direct ongoing collaboration. <laughs> you know, these are all like really, you know, collab, you know, really people that um, we do collaborate with, you know, probably weekly, you know, it's not yeah. a lot of them. So it's, um, yeah, like a lot example. of people take advantage of the sort of type of service and referral and information that Casa Latina can give. And one of the things that we did actually, we had a Blue Cross Blue Shield grant recently to um, look at the healthcare system and how it serves Latinos and, um, and then how to increase the, the sort of quality of care for Latinos and access. And I mean, I think one of the things that we came out of that realizing is that we're, we're actually providing you know, there's a lot of Latinos in this community that would take their services out to Folio if we weren't here to bridge them between their health care provider and other things they need in order to, to get there and to understand, you know, the, whatever diagnosis or what kind of medications and follow up. And so we're doing a really high level of case management. And it's at this point kind of a free service to health providers. Um, so one of the things that we're trying to look at is our budget just gets, you know, I mean, really the grants, it's so tricky for us right now because grants are so more, much more competitive. There's so much fewer of them. And the Latino population in Hampshire County just isn't that of Holyoke and Springfield who we're competing with. Okay. So it's just, uh, it's just tricky. The grants that we used to get to sustain ourselves, like a DPH grant for 100000 a year or um, you know, or the EOHHS grant for, you know, 75 or 100,000 a year. We're just not getting those anymore. And so we're count, we count on the support that we get, say, from CDBG in Northampton, from, you know, United Way, from um, 
from community foundation, and even those people are getting squeezed, and so our grants get smaller. Yeah. And I, I guess the thing that, and you know, hopefully part of the reason why we're here is to say that you know, in some ways, the services that we provide the Latino community are also benefiting organizations and agencies um, and healthcare providers in a way that I don't think has been measured entirely. So that if we weren't here, it's likely they would actually lose their patients, some of their patients, or they would have many more missed uh, appointments. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, so I think the impact is not, th there's not an appreciation for the service that we're providing free to some of these, you know, more or less for profit organizations, you know, or non profit organizations that are maybe thriving. Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to look at ways that we can provide fee for service in that kind of thing as we're struggling to stay How vibrant many and healthy. Latinos live in North Dam and Florence in our city. Me? Yeah. That, um, well, see, anything. I think I broke it down county wide. And, um, you know, one thing that, oh, where did I put it? Oh, boy. I shuffled through all my papers here. Why am I not seeing it? But I can tell you. There's about 7,500 Latinos in Hampshire County. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that seems really, somehow really small when I think about it. It's about 5% um, of our population. Most of that, oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. Most of that, um, li most Latinos live in Amherst or Northampton. So that's about 5%? Yeah, of the overall population in Hampshire County. And maybe a, a larger percent of Northampton and Amherst. I think it's about 7% in Northampton because there's more yeah. living in there. Yeah. And then, you know, like for certain schools in Amherst and Northampton too, like Jackson Street is 26% Latino and mm -hmm. um, almost half minority if you include other minorities. Yeah. yeah. And it's growing. I mean, I think from 2010 to today, um, the increase was from 3% to 5%, and we know that's only going to continue to grow. That's about a 43% increase. Have you ever thought of fundraising? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'd say, I mean, huh, how to describe this? We, we actively are fig trying to figure out ways to do very successful fundraisers. Unfortunately, we just can't sustain the organization through, like, bake sale type fundraising. You know, it's not enough. Um, we need some larger pots of money to sustain ourselves to even be able to go after a, a five or ten thousand dollar fundraiser. Our board is small. It's um, a very active board that oftentimes helps write grants. Mm -hmm. You know, steps right in and does some of the work if we need to. Um, but we we need to beef up our board more in order to. We don't have. I'd say the capacity right now on our board to do a large successful fundraiser. We've done a couple of dances, which we consider to be those type of mm -hmm. activities that would be large and successful. We promoted them widely. And to be honest, we did pretty well. In two years, we raised, I think, $4,000, but our cost to do it was about $2,000. Uh -huh. um, another year, we kind of broke even. The benefits go beyond that, the publicity, the name recognition, we gain new board members by doing that. So it's still worth it, but it pretty much took like, you know, half the year's energy of our board <laughs> to do it. And you know, it's, whereas, you know, so yeah. So I mean, we, we definitely want to fundraise, we're open to ideas. We need to think big in some ways too, though. If you look at Safe Passage, when yeah. they first started off, they yeah. were small. Yeah. And look at the fundraising. Once a year, 200, yeah. what was it, 250,000 this year? Yeah. You know? So, yeah. And I think it's great Yeah. with what's going on with Safe Passage. So maybe yeah. it's something to look at. Yeah. And we would love to, if anyone's listening out there, <laughs> to get a board member who has that those oh, really. skills and talents. Yeah. We really would. We'd love to have some, some energy come our way and mm -hmm. help guide us on some of those really successful fundraisers. We find funds availability mm -hmm. to be dwindling. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, one, one of the conversations that we had uh, at the beginning of uh, December in our uh, Encuentro, the Encuentro is a meeting that we have with the Latino community every year that discuss, you know, what we have done during the last year, and then we ask them to evaluate the work that we have done and what they would like to see for the next year. 
And it's one of the conversation ones that the changes that we are going to have next, next year, because of course we are going to have a cuts in hours. And, a, and, and to see the, 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 the response from them about the membership, uh, because that is probably still a little bit amount of money, but just to start with something, and, and people are very, very uh, supportive. supportive. Uh, they want to really see that, that we do that, and they want to support Casa Latina. Uh, something that have changed for the last year, for example, is that we used to cover all the, the activities for the Christmas Day. Uh, we provide uh, the dinner and the toys and that, that uh, the, United, the collaboration with the United Way we couldn't get with them. Uh, and now uh, people are donating money to, to buy food and to buy some toys. Mm -hmm. So that, and that is coming from the community also. So those are changes uh, that is the way that you know co money is coming to the community because these these are activities that, that the community wants to see. They they really want to have the, like the Christmas Day activity is something that they really are waiting for the whole year to have that activity to get together to have music to eat together to have the kids together. And so they have Santa Claus. No, it's it's the Christmas Day activity. It's no. some it's a, a something for that we celebrate in our country. Uh, we in uh, last years we didn't have that, but in the last the, the years before we have had uh, the, the kids that uh, come uh, with uh, just some dress and yeah, yeah. As, uh, the chicken the, the chicken. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, just to have to have the music and dinner and have the opportunity to see people that sometimes it's the only opportunity that they really have get together to see each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's a nice thing to do. So now when do we do that? It's gonna be in January twelfth. And you're all invited. It's yeah. really a fun event to come to. So the bulk of your two hundred thousand dollar budget. Yeah. It's under that actually. Okay. It's, it's oh I think it's about a hundred and thirty thousand right now. Yeah. For Where does the bulk of that come from? Oh that that comes right now they for next year we have a United Way. That is uh, the, the bigger amount that we receive. Uh, we support. Uh, About we 30, have thirty-five thousand. Uh -huh. And then we got a uh, CDBG money that this year is eight thousand uh, six hundred. We have the collaboration for the last year. Last years we have had the collaboration of Highland Valley of their services, Community Foundation, Hay Market. This year we got uh, support from uh, Women's Fund. Uh, and then we have the contract with a uh, Dickinson Hospital to to cover the interpretations that uh, they can cover. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also, Cooley Dickinson Hospital um, really, uh, through their Healthy Communities um, a Committee, has it, it's just been fantastic. Really, um, you know, with Jeff Harness, um, you know, working with the hospital to sort of look at the services that we provide in the way that I was saying before, that we're really benefiting you know, a lot of um, other organizations and health providers. And so you know, they were able to sort of recognize that. And they, the first year, they gave us $7,500 just as a community benefit um, you know, to, to help sustain the work that we're doing. And this year, they raised that to $15,000. And that's been, we're just, we're very appreciative of that. Um, you know, as having a huge hospital institution right here, you know, it's uh, it's really nice that they value what we're doing and, and are showing that. That's precious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think I don't see any of it says Commonwealth of Massachusetts uh, gives you <laughs> so much money. Okay. Right. I see Mass Health on here, Department of Mental Health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We don't ha we don't have funding from them right now, although you know. Um, no, you just sure. had collaborate with them yeah. as far as services go. Oh, yes, exactly. But, but, so I would not take away from this that you get money from these people. No. Okay. Do, no. During the past, I mean we have to. No, we are all, oftentimes we're providing a service to them. That's what but I we're want. not getting okay. money. <laughs> but during the past, we had have a, we have a contract with Mass Health. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Particularly with, with the new health care reform. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. we, we spent three years working on that transition with Rotino community. I'm trying to wrap my head around how you actually survive. I know, when, and do the incredible amount of work that gets done. I mean, that's the thing that blows me away. I don't think people really know how much you work. Yeah. 
Right. I mean, between staff. providing, yeah, medical interpretations, door-to-door -door outreach, doing community programs, you know, even organizing big projects like the Tenant Association or, you know, the leadership group was uh, a group to train Latinos um, and provide sort of education around what does it take to be on a board or a committee or part of a city government and how can, you know, you work towards having a voice there. You know, really, really good work, you know. January 12th, where was that when we held? The, uh, the Florence Community Center? Florence, Florence yeah. Community one Center. o'clock. Mm -hmm. One o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Was it a Saturday? Mm -hmm. Saturday, yes. And what do we do? What do we bring? Well, a collaboration, a donation would be good because uh, during the last years we asked people to, to, to donate, to, you know, to bring different plates of food, but then we realized that it's hard to have lunch. At one, you know, at one o'clock, yeah, everybody goes to have lunch. So what we are doing, we did this last year, and, and the plan for this year is just to go to a Latino restaurant in Holyoke and bring the whole lunch, and then we, you know, they will have lunch. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So so it's catered, so a little offsetting mm -hmm. the cost of that helps. Yeah. <laughs> so what you're saying is, we're being invited, and Pat Keller, who's sitting in the back. So we just bring money and donate money mm -hmm. for Casa Latina, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a really great And event. can I give you a suggestion? Mm -hmm. Why don't you... When's our city council meeting? The third of January? We'll have it part of me. Uh, yeah, it is the third. Wait a minute. Fifth. No, you're right. Third and the 17th, yeah. Yep. Oh, you're good. Mm, so on the 17th, I, I have a feeling I know what your suggestion is going to be. Mm -hmm. The third of the 17th. Yep. He's good. Um, I would suggest January 3rd because this is going to be on the 12th, which would be the week before mm -hmm. this occurs. Come to City Council. Mm -hmm. You can either have a choice of open public session and let the public know mm -hmm. what you're doing mm -hmm. in donations of money. Mm -hmm. Okay. If so, you could also ask Bill Dwight to have the both of you be set up on presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, well you can get like a 15 minute presentation right here, right on mm -hmm. the floor. We I would highly mm -hmm. suggest, yeah. Peg, wouldn't you think that would yeah. be good? I mean, I think mm -hmm. the, you know, last year we had over 300 people. So people are turning out, they're what? coming. It's huge. I think what's what's exciting is when people How did you get three hundred in there? Yeah. Well, well, some of them are small. Outside yeah. depending. Um, but I think what's exciting for us is for people who don't get exposed to the Latino community in the same way, and especially the hard to reach low income Latino community. You know, who, who work in our kitchens and who, you know, provide services for a lot of people here but aren't the visible majority. It's great when people come and meet the and, and just experience. Oh, they're you know. great. We went up to the yeah, Florence so Community especially Center. The, right. Look at the food they had you do yeah. when we were up there. Yeah. It was good. Yeah, <laughs> very welcoming. Yeah. And so I mean, we do we do invite you, and we invite other people who you know really would like to to network and and for any Latino community that doesn't know about it already. But you know, it's um and it's socializing. Yeah. It's getting to know. Yeah. You know, and it's good for people too to see um, important people from the white community come out and show interest and care. And, you know. That's why I highly suggest yeah. you get a hold of Bill to White mm -hmm. and tell him after this meeting that mm -hmm. we've highly suggested you either come to open public session or either go into a presentation that mm -hmm. night. Wouldn't hurt. Yeah. And you'd be surprised. People watch. And mm -hmm. there might be people out there who would say, I cannot attend it. We tell them sometimes business mm -hmm. owners and say, hey, I'm going to send them a check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every bit helps. Yeah. 
Yes, it helps because what happened is that uh, in, during the past, when we started to develop this, this uh, activity, uh, when, when we received the, the choice from United Way, normally we could cover almost every kid. Every kid. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have to buy additional well, uh, toys. How do you toys. know how many children? We have, we connect every single family. Wow. They call us or we call them and then we have a list of every family with the kids under 14 years old. With names and a date of birth. Did you <coughs> wrap them and everything? Everything, everything. And because we don't want them to the feel, huh? Who helps People them? from the community come. As soon as, as, soon as we get the toys uh, the first week of uh, January, we know, we divide them, we know exactly what we have, and we have the list. We know how many kids of six, seven, eight, you know, the ages yeah. and, and boys and girls so whatever we don't have, we have to run and buy. Right. When do you do the wrapping? We are going to be doing that uh, the after, the probably after the fifth in January, in January, when we receive the toys. Where do you do that? Uh, in Casa Latina. We have people from the community that come, and we have up at the Florence. Yeah, yeah Casa Latina. Said? Yes. At what time? During the day at any time. They well, come and they that's where that's where the office is. Well. We have to go over it yesterday. Right there, right there. Any mm -hmm. during business hours. Yeah. Okay, do you do it right in that big room in the front? The activity? Yes. Yeah. The racket. Oh, probably in, in our office. office. We have toys toys everywhere. <laughs> Why don't you use that big room? Because we have to pay for it. Uh -huh. Twenty five dollars <laughs> per hour. Oh. <laughs> How much do you think you spend on wrapping paper? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. <coughs> but we have to do it. What yeah. happens is that we have. And it's not a lot. Yeah. We do it because we don't want to have kids saying, you know, one of the instructions is that they can't open the, you know, the wrap the the, the, the toys there. Uh, we don't want them to be uncomfortable because you know they wanted another toy and they couldn't get it, and so we want to be sure that everyone's going to be happy. So what we do, we have lunch at one o'clock. We have activities, and then at the end of the uh, afternoon, we give the the the, 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 the gifts to the parents, mm -hmm. and we request them to wait uh, until they got home to open it. Mm -hmm. So they don't. They are, no, they don't do it. Mm -hmm. They are very good with that because we we say very clear. We don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable if they don't get what they are expecting to receive because these are you know th this is a present. Uh, with from our heart, you know, it's not something that it's going to be, so. So what does it usually cost? What is it per child? What is the price that you see? Around $10. Some of them are pretty, very good. You know how it is, because these are donations that are done uh, for Christmas, and whatever is left after, I don't know exactly who is uh, responsible mm -hmm. for that, to, to deliver uh, toys for, for Christmas here. But after that is gone, whatever is left comes to Casa Latina. Oh. Yeah. And some of them are very good toys, mm -hmm. but others are not as good, you know, yeah. and we don't want them to be like. Right. And you know, mm -hmm. what time on January 5th does your <laughs> office open when you start wrapping the <laughs> gifts? Well, I have to wait for a, a United Way to call me and tell me, come for the toys. So it could happen at any time after New Year. Okay. And uh, normally it's the first week because they know that we are going to have the activity as soon as uh, after uh, the trick-in, that is uh, January 6th. The celebration is January 6th. This, this year is Sunday. So for that reason, we are doing it the 12th because we need to have enough time to wrap up. Because right? mm -hmm. I think I'd like to help you wrap. Mm -hmm. you invited to come? Would you like to come? I can call you at the beginning of January. It depends what's going on with my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I call you. I, really, I let you know, and if you would like to come, yeah. we normally have, you know, sometimes uh, six, seven people from the community wow. doing it together. Yeah. And like, say, if we wanted to come at nine thirty or quarter or ten in the morning, mm -hmm. we could do that. Exactly. For yeah. Hours. Exactly. During the week, mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. But you know, and then uh -huh. oh well, I was just thinking. No. I was kind of going back to what you, you were saying about you know you don't know how we do it or how we stay open. And to be honest, we're we're worried of going forward. You know, and unless things begin to change a little bit, all of the things that we do in the community 
I mean, the Casa Latina has been around for 45 years. You know, it's changed even longer. It's changed, it morphed, it started, you know, as a very cultural center. And then 15 years ago, you know, it was very identified basic need, the need to, to help people with basic needs. And, you know, it's kind of gone in the health and human services direction. But it's been here for a really long time. And the idea, and we sort of know that there's no way that this organization can just close down. Like, what will the community, it's like, mm -hmm. it's sort of, that would be a disaster. It would. But mm -hmm. I don't, but we also are at a very critical point right now. So, you know, it's like, we, we can do a fundraiser, we could raise, you know, I mean, really a lot of the good successful fundraisers take years to build, but we could, we can work towards that. But in the immediate future, it's like, we need, we need people to advocate for us. We need people to know we're there. We need people to realize you know, what the service is that, that we're providing and, um, and see it as necessary and, and just really step up and help <coughs> us figure this one out. Because, <coughs> you know, it's just between the mix of the economy. And we've been here before. We've been through 45 years, 50 years. We've been through another recession <laughs> and made it out. But, you know, but we can't guarantee that unless we can really figure things out in the next few years and bridge till things the economy gets better until the grants start flowing again and other things. Because they're pretty non-existent right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's really tough right now. Which now we know that we are going up to the next December. Yeah. Because the support that we have going up to now and the grants <coughs> that are running from different periods. And that would be with one less staff that we've had to will we would be laying off a staff person and then we can s sustain until December. There's a lot of help that you got from Senator Rosenberg and Peter Kokot. Yeah, a couple, of, I'd say three mm -hmm. years ago, um, Peter Kokot was able to earmark $25,000 um, mm -hmm. at the state level to come right to Casa Latina as sort of, you know, immediate funding. And, and he was hoping it would, it would last another year yeah. or so. But um, mm -hmm. so he is one of our true, you know, was that a one-time? He was wonderful, yeah. It was one time. I mean, there was yeah. sort of a little hope that it might continue. He yeah. didn't like it might continue. <laughs> but it was really beneficial that one time. <coughs> what was the CDBG award for Casa Latina last From year? From Northampton? She said it was 8,600. 8,600. Yeah. For the last few years, 8,600. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before, yeah. What was it before that? 12? 12,000. Yeah, I think it was 12. 12. One time we got 22. Wow. Back in the old days. When we, yeah. I, I, and I think that, you know, the, the point is that uh, what we have seen is that when we have really needed, it has been a very, very difficult situation, we have gotten the support from, from CDBG, United mm -hmm. Way. Community action. We don't have any support right now from community action, but community action has been so good with us for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And we know for sure that if, if they got any any grants, they have us in mind. Mm -hmm. You know, they it's are always thinking about the way that they can, you know, work in collaboration with us. Mm -hmm. But in you know, and then we, you know, Anita has worked with the schools for many years mm -hmm. and um, worked with the housing authority and helping them, you know, look at how how business is done and, and I think influenced the hiring of a bilingual person and looked at their forms and you know helped to get them translated and so it's like there's a return service you know it's like which I think is just nice and again just I'd like people to know that investing in Casa Latina the investment kicks back you know and, and you get something for it you know there's just really concrete work happening now with mm. community action somebody you worked with the former mayor Mary Claire Higgins, have you, she's the executive yeah. director, have you sat down and talked with We her? have yeah. continuously, I actually belong to the uh, Board of Community Action, and so so we have a really good communication mm -hmm. all the time, and good. just that they don't have any any grants right now that can. No, because, you know, they're restricted mm -hmm. also. Because mm -hmm. the last mm -hmm. I talked mm -hmm. with the executive director, I mean, it, it's bad this year, they got people mm -hmm. asking all over the place for fuel yeah. assistance. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've actually had her scheduled to be before us twice this year, mm -hmm. and both times she has it for some reason or other. Mm -hmm. um, has not made it here. Yeah. I actually saw her in CBS. 
Yeah, you missed her because you were out when we had her. She attended our meeting. No kidding. Yeah, you were out. You were out mm -hmm. sick. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And we do actually. We have a meeting. Um, we're in the works of scheduling a meeting with um, Jeff Harness from Cooley Dickinson Hospital, um, Jim Ayers from United Way, and yep. Claire Higgins. So we have. We're hoping that we can get that team in one room and really strategize. Can you let me know when that is? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why you're sitting way back there. <laughs> you could hear better if you were. Well, I need to here. take off, so I didn't want to be intrusive. <laughs> <laughs> but I, need I want to thank you both for being here. Yeah. Thank and you. family with powers. Mm -hmm. Before you leave, what is your connection with family with powers? And do they have a board? Or okay. this is this is it. five years ago, Mary A. Uh, Mary A. Uh, Howie, who is a teacher uh, at the at Jackson Street School, third grade teacher. Uh, she met with Kim Gerald, who is another teacher, third grade from uh, Jackson Street School. And a former Maria Aguilar. Yeah. Maria Aguilar, who's a board member, mm -hmm. who is one of uh, uh, was one of the parents uh, at that time. Uh, with kids in Jackson Street School, and me. Uh, just to have a conversation about what we could do together mm -hmm. uh, to support uh, the community, the students. Uh, uh, which he, as a teacher, she, she realized that uh, the communication between teachers and parents was very hard. And for low income people, and people of color, to come to school to participate in activities and, and really be connected with, with, the, you know, with the teachers who have to a, a clear communication about what was going on with the kids was very difficult. Mm -hmm. So we have a brainstorm about what we can do to do together, and they, you know, I think that the idea came from all of us, you know, like a, a because the experience that we have had working with the community. So we decided to to have a group in the community uh, of low income people uh, of color uh, uh, to develop leadership. So since, since five years ago, we have had a retreat every year uh, with uh, parents, and for the la last year, we had the kids also in that retreat, mm -hmm. and this year, we are planning that for May. Uh, and we discussed uh, you know, what we have done in the last year, what we plan to do for the next year, you know, and everybody participates. It's just an amazing opportunity to develop leadership for everyone. And I have seen so many changes in people from the community that it's just, you know. And who's in charge of family? Well, uh, we have a group, uh, Mary, 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 mm -hmm. Mary uh, Kawi, uh, she's the person who, who really is. Mary, is Mary, M Mary and Kawi, C-O-W-H-E-Y. Uh, and what's her position? Well, she, we don't have positions yet. <laughs> well, she's we have made, teacher, Jackson she's oh, a okay. teacher in Jackson Street School, but in that group, we we have we are calling a board, calling it board, but the reality is that we are not a an organization. We are we are just a group. Okay. Uh, but we have a group of uh, uh, parents that are the the ones that are participating all the time. Uh, that and, and we are trying to develop something to have like. It, you know, organized in some way, but we haven't done that yet. Okay. But nothing is done if we don't meet before and take decisions about, you know, whatever <coughs> we have. Mm -hmm. okay. so. And we have been able to develop in collaboration, we, we have the panel with the mayors mm -hmm. and, and the con council councils mm -hmm. at the time, mm -hmm. that was like two years ago. Mm -hmm. We have had, we have had developed uh, so many different workshops uh, uh, in Jackson Street School, and it, it, it's based in Jackson Street School, but it's for all the schools in Northampton. So we have had parents, the participation of the parents of mm -hmm. every single school. And it's mm -hmm. not, it's sort of a, it, it's a separate program from Casa Latina, but a lot of the people that support it are also highly connected with Casa mm -hmm. Latina. Some staff hours go towards it. Um, we've talked about ways to collaborate, you know, in terms of if we were to write a grant and write them in, we could funnel some money that way, mm -hmm. um, things like that. Mm -hmm. 
So Castle has been around for about 45 years, but you've been 15 50. years here in Northampton. Actually, around no, no, 50. No. 50 all in Northampton. Yeah. Northampton. All in Northampton. Yeah, but in the, but it's just it's just gone through a lot of changes. And I was saying, like in the last 15 years, the direction that it took. We we about 15 years ago we lost our HIV funding, right? The mm -hmm. EPH funding, and yeah. and sort of had to decide what were our, what would be our priorities moving forward at that point. And um, you know, we decided on the information and referral, the you know medical trans. Uh, interpreting and um, community, education. community education programs. Oh, okay. Yeah, so those are our three priorities for that amount of time. So That's what you have. Yeah. Relate the 15 to yeah, 45, sorry. I couldn't play. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think she used the table on history health, yeah. which is a big deal. You must work with them. Yeah, in terms of the referrals and stuff. Yeah. Although, we, you know, another thing that we're kind of looking at is like, are there organizations that can write us into grants that they might be writing out, that there's a ton out there. But you know, if they if they can serve one part of the community, but we can help them serve the Latino community and strengthen their grant, while at the same time, you know, just building in a little bit for us to provide that service. You know, service now. Yeah. What about service now? We have had conversations yeah. about uh, Programs like, for example, interpretation is something that is important. Uh, you know, has been important for them all the time because they can really provide services to, to a big number of uh, Latinos in our community mm -hmm. uh, because they don't have the staff who can speak Spanish. And right now, uh, they actually have a contract with one person that is interpreter of Casa Latina uh, to cover 